Hey guys, in this video we're going to take a look at 3D printing your terrain with an FDM printer. I'll see you after this. So why 3D printing? Well, back in the day I was looking at playing games like 40k, Bold Action, Age of Sigma, other things related to those kind of genres. And whilst I had decent looking armies, I had no decent looking terrain. Whilst terrain was sometimes available, it was either expensive or just not up to scratch, not what I was looking for. So I made some inquiries with a local firm who recently set up that were doing 3D printable terrain as options that you could buy and download. And I asked them what sort of printers they were using. They came back to me with the Prusa brand, uh, which I believe is based in Poland. Um, I made some inquiries there and ended up buying a Prusa i3 Mark III S filament printer. Filament printers print with a material called PLA. Uh, it's a kind of plastic and it goes through the hot end of the print nozzle and prints away your design, uh, building up layer by layer from a hot print bed until it reaches completion and the print job concludes. Um, fairly straightforward. I certainly had some teething problems and it was a steep learning curve to get used to these kind of things to start with. But the magic trick was realizing that you could use hairspray as the adhesion for the build plate for the first layers of the printing filament to adhere to. And then most of the time your prints were successful. Um, I bought my printer about, oh, it must be over five years ago now I think, and it's been pretty much steadily printing non-stop since then. I funnily call it the Terminator because it absolutely will not stop. Um, you look at print terrain and or printable terrain files and you break them down into pieces and you look at it and think, oh god that file is going to take four hours, six hours to print before I can do anything with it. And that seems like a hell of a long time. But again you forget that that printer is going to just keep on printing. It'll print through the day, you go to bed, it'll keep on printing all night long, you get up in the morning, it's still printing. You quickly find that it can print stuff faster than you could scratch build it. In fact, it'll print stuff faster than I can keep up with it, getting models painted. So don't worry about the time frame. Once you get one of these things going, you're good to go. You're, you're, you're golden, honestly. Um, if you're concerned about wastage and such like, uh, and the plastic's the devil of the world this, these days. PLA is a biodegradable material, so if you are worried about waste materials, etc, etc, don't worry about it, and go in the landfill, it'll rot down, it's no problem whatsoever. So, have a look at it. 3D printing for terrain is pretty easy. You're looking at regular objects like square buildings, um, towers, cars maybe, uh, ships, Basically anything big and chunky you can think of. They're not particularly good for actual figurines themselves. If you want to print figurines, you really want to look at a resin printer. Far better, far better detail, um, crisper detail, comes out pretty well. Um, I'll talk about that in another video perhaps. Uh, but yeah, if you want to print terrain and you want to get a load of it and you want it available quickly, certainly look at getting yourself a FDM or filament printer. The Prusa that I got was two options. They would ship it flat packed and you would have to build it yourself or they would send it built. Sending it built was a, a, a longer process in terms of getting it to you and was more expensive but I quickly realized that I either didn't trust myself to get it made or I knew that if it arrived flat packed, it would probably be still be sitting in the flat pack box now, five years on, and I wouldn't have touched it. So, if you can afford it, get it sent built. If you're more technical minded, get it flat packed and build it yourself. The positive thing to that is that if anything does go wrong, you know how you put it together and you know what all the parts do and things. So there's a certainly a, a pro to that side of things. Uh, in terms of um, problems I've had with the printer, uh, other than issues in terms of adhesion to the build plate and as I said hairspray seemed to fix that pretty much nine times out of ten The only thing I had was a uh, Requirement to replace the hot end of the 
print uh, head, and that was about a $20 piece, so you're not talking like vast amounts of expense. The material itself is relatively cheap uh, to buy as well. We do it in one kilo rolls at the store, and they're about $30, and that kilo will print you a ton of stuff. Um, so yeah, have a look at it. I'll put some links in the description below. Uh, you can check out some options there. And I'll go on now to some things I've printed just to give you some examples of what's possible. Okay, enjoy the rest of the video. So here's my printer working merrily away. I've left the sound on so you can hear how uh, noisy this kind of printer is. They do generate some noise, which could be intrusive, so you may need to have some consideration where you cite it in your home or business. So here you can see it printing four pillars, more on those later. There's the display which shows you what it's busy printing, how hot it's running. You can see the black square plate that the printer's printing on, that's the hot plate, that's what it prints out from, layer by layer. There's the print head working, and you can see the little brass hot end there. That's very hot, so don't touch it. And the two fans are keeping the print head at the right temperature. That will continue printing until it completes. And there's our can of hairspray, which is an absolute godsend. And here you can see the four pillars printed to conclusion. They're on a little bit of a, what's called a brim on the base there, so I'm going to break them off. You can just pull it apart and that'll just peel away quite easily. It might leave a little bit of a small amount which you can trim away with a knife, but most of it just peels off quite nicely. There you go. Okay, four pillars. And here's one I prepared earlier. So these have been trimmed, looking a bit tidier. Ta-da! Okay, so what we're gonna do with them? We're going to add one of these, which is a little piece of science fiction grating or walkway. And that's going to allow us to build a simple little platform. Like so. Then what? Okay. Here's a little thing I designed, which works as a railing or a ladder, depending on which way around you orientate it. And here's some metal from a drinks can. Using a corrugator, you can make your own corrugated sheet. Here's some I prepared earlier. Lots of different pieces. Could it a size and shape as you want to use it? So putting all those components together, I managed to come up with the following. Ta-da! So there's some little towers for my Necromunda or 40k gaming, and you can see some of my Orlocks sitting there quite proudly holding position. I left some gaps in the walling areas so I can add other platforms and walkways joining them up to other buildings as well. Uh, but there they're ready to go. And here's our little comrade adding himself to the battlefield, but he wants to get up the ladder. And what happens if you haven't got enough movement to get all the way to the top in one go? You use a little ladder support. So again, that's another little 3D printed item. We can hook that on to wherever he managed to reach in his movement allowance, and then pop him on the platform in place. Ta-da! So there you go. There are all sorts of things you can find files for on the internet. Here's a couple of things which you might recognize. These files are free to download uh, and you can print them out as many times as you want, which is great. So they're sci-fi. And here's some historical stuff. These are uh, purchased files. This is a Roman tower, obviously, a guard tower type thing. It is sectional as well, so you can take it apart and put your models inside should you need to. There you go, the roof lifts off. And those little holes in the sides are for adding little support struts which will allow the um, walls to join to the next layer. 
and not knock off sideways so it gives it lateral stability. And if you take the little ladder out the way, you can see the final layer as well. So there you go, Roman Tower. Still on the list of jobs to do and models to complete and paint. As I said, this thing can print things faster than you can keep up with it. And there's a Roman temple, I guess you'd call it. Um, again, sectional. Uh, the roof will come off to put troops inside should you want to. I'm going to try and come up with some um, LED idea to put some flames in those two braziers at the front there. I haven't quite figured that out yet. And there's the roof coming off to see the troops placement inside that you can do. These are some purchased files again. These are vehicles for a kind of cyberpunk setting, something like Judge Dredd or maybe Necromunda even, might get away with. Um, I always wish I could find some files for 40k vehicles so we could populate our battlefields with some of those too, but never quite seem to come across anything appropriate. But anyway, there you go. Um, a regular truck, a road cleaner, and a couple of little taxi units. You might recognize those probably from um, oh, one of the Schwarzenegger movies, Total Recall or something, where they get in the little Johnny cab. Same kind of idea. And here is a, a little priest's pulpit from inside a church or cathedral. Paints up quite nicely. This was um, done with, um, I think it was... A uh, skeleton bone spray with a soft tone wash and then dried up with Hushabti bone. And then the carpet was just contrast uh, blood angels, I think. It's just showing it's plastic. And same kind of idea. Here is a uh, another purchased file. This is a sectional thing and you basically design your own building making the sections that you want. If you look closely, you can see the join marks there. So that's like six vertical pieces. Uh, the roof is separate again into six pieces plus the wall supports. But basically you can print as many components as you want and build a building as big as you want. Uh, there's also ruined sections as well to build ruined bits. And if you look closely, I've magnetized that as well. So again, just to give it some lateral stability, there's the magnets I've drilled in. The little ladder addition inside was just something I decided to do myself just to give it a little bit of authenticity. How would the troops get the top level otherwise? Likewise, the little trapdoor on the top, I designed and printed that myself. Fairly easy to do with uh, programs like 3D Builder, which is freely available on Windows. So there you go, another little 40k building for some sci-fi action. And this is a uh, Saxon village I've been working on for quite some time. All the buildings are 3D printed. Uh, I did embellish the roofs with the classic teddy bear fur. Uh, other than the hen house, that is still just a static 3D print. Uh, all the fences are 3D printed. All the carts and wagons and things are 3D printed. The well isn't, I scratch build that. Here's another 3D sectional uh, item. Uh, it's a guard tower again for, uh, I guess, Dark Ages period with the palisade. A cargo container for 40k or Necromunda. A ruined cathedral, again a purchase vice. I added extra bits of rubble and things just to make it a bit more ricked and rubbly inside. And here's a farmhouse suitable for things like World War II or other periods related to that. Uh, again, it is in multiple parts. It's got roofs that will lift off which are magnetized again, just to stop them sliding off. It's all sectional, so you can take the roof off to get access to the troops inside on various levels. These floors also lift out. Just gotta watch those little lugs, there you go. So you've got access to put troops on two different levels and the attic level as well. the roof clicks back into place once you line it up there we go and again another side building again magnetized roof and another little outhouse and again the roof will come off with access to the rooftop attic and the inside of the barn as well
and nice detail on all sides. And this is a neat little one. That's actually a drinks can. The components you print out and add those to the drinks can, obviously once you've enjoyed the contents, and make your um, storage cylinder, fuel silo, whatever you want to call it, out of um, a drinks can. Perfect for Necromunda or other sci-fi 40k-like settings. And this is another sectional building uh, from the same supplier, printable scenery. Uh, again, you print the pieces that you want and you make the building that you want. Um, again, I made enough here to make it two levels. I also made a little staircase in, underneath and all the extra rubble bits and things on the floor area. That's all scratch built components out of plaster of Paris and all kinds of uh, gravels and debris and things. Just to give it a level of authenticity. Another one here. This one is one piece. Uh, the, the, the top doesn't come off. But again, the same idea. Sectional, make it how you want it. Here's a little uh, noodle canteen thing, again, for your cyberpunk sci-fi settings. Great little file. And the roof comes off so you can get it, guys, inside. Oh, the rear shelving has fallen down. Let's see if we can get that back up. There we go. So we can have all these little bits and bobs there. These ovens in there. He's ready to go. I've got some figures to go in there as well, some little noodle chefs. Look cool. So here's the product itself. This is our brand of, not our brand, sorry, the brand we stock, are, which is eSun, which is their uh, filament. And it's a 1.75mm uh, diameter piece of plastic on a big roll. Uh, we keep the grey in because it's the most neutral colour, if you like, because obviously most people that buy from us are going to print terrain and then paint it, so colour's not important. But the comes with a manual as well, which details what sort of material it is. Here you can see it's on its roll. It comes shrink-wrapped, so it's fresh with a desiccant in there as well, because it will degrade over time if exposed to the air. As said, it is a biodegradable product. So keep it in there to keep it fresh. And here is just have a flick through the manual. You can see all kinds of different printable materials. These aren't all filaments. There's resins here as well, so all kinds of things you can do with printing. Quite a wonderful technology. So that's a quick look at 3D printing terrain with a filament printer. I hope it's given you some pause for thought and maybe get some ideas as what you can do uh, with your own terrain requirements. Um, as said before, filament printers are not terribly expensive. Uh, you can probably pick one up reasonably priced. Um, I realise that some people haven't got the space to have loads of terrain printed out and things, so maybe you're part of a club, maybe the club can get together and get a printer, and then the person who's got the space to have it and the tech savvy to use it and the time to do so can print those prints out for the club, uh, and then maybe you get together and have a painting day and get the club's terrain painted. Anyway, lots of ideas, lots of options for you there. Um, as I said, I'll put some links in the description below. Um, and hope that helps you. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.